Henry, Henry, will you slow down? This wilderness has been here for millions of years. It's not going to disappear whilst you unpack. But I want to see Roosevelt. He's the best. A president, a boxer, and a hunter. Yes, and he won't be back till sundown. How do you know? I know. Okay, I'll slow down. I fear Mr. Medlicott's boisterous nature is a bad influence on you, Henry. Hello. Oh, Mr. Medlicott. Would you like me to show you around the camp before they return? Yes, sir. Henry, will you slow down or you'll collapse with sunstroke? Don't worry, Miss Seymour. I'll calm him down. Some help, I'm sure. We have some excellent cooks here, you know. Some of President Roosevelt's favourite dishes are elephant trunk soup, ostrich liver, giraffe heart. You'll love it. Mmm. Hello, let me introduce you to Henry Jones, Jr., Professor Jones' son. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Heller. Heller's a taxidermist. He prepares the specimens for transportation back to the United States. The next time you go into a museum and stare at a lion, you can think of me and my blood-stained hands. Something wondrous fed the purest face and the strongest So I see. Thanks. This is Frederick Salou. He helped plan the safari and is probably one of the best hunters in all of Africa. Good to meet you, Henry. Pleased to meet you, sir. Excuse me. And that's President Roosevelt's son, Kermit. Kermit, are you ready? Yes, Father, all set. Come on in. Oh, no, no, no. 
have read your book on medieval armory, Professor Jones. It's a fine work. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You must read a lot. Not as much as I'd like to. Mr. President? Can only manage Mr. A... President? Excuse me, Professor Jones. You see, sir, they clearly indicate this as being one of the Burton's Oryx's breeding grounds. There ought to be thousands of them around here. Well, that's quite a mystery, then. Mind you, this was written 20 years ago. I haven't seen any of this yet. Well, they can't have all just died out. They may have migrated north. They favor dry areas. Oh, what a beautiful animal. It's a very rare fringe-eared oryx. And that was a lion, I suppose. Well, at least we're in safe company. No hunter is safe, Miss Seymour. Today, I shot a lioness. Her mate was nearby. I shot the mate. But unfortunately, I only wounded it. We must never underestimate a wounded lion. Remember Johnson? Teddy, you surely don't believe that old story, do you? Believe it? I was there. The man was scared out of his wits. He even built a tree house thinking he'd be safe. But the wounded beast came into camp that night and smelt him out. Nothing we could do. Do you know how to shoot a gun, Henry? No, sir. He's only 10 years old. By the time I was 10, I had an intimate knowledge of firearms. Tomorrow, my boy, I'll teach you how to shoot. Sleep, Junior. Light your target. Squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it. Squeeze it. Well done. Come on. Open the gun and let out the shells. Careful. Quite a marksman. Always remember, the gun should only be used in order to survive. Ah, now, this is the best gun ever made. You may not be able to come on the hunt with us, but you should at least be able to enjoy this fine land. Keep them. They're yours. Thank you, sir. You look after him now, Miss Seymour. And you be good. Yes, sir. Wouldn't you just love to go on the hunt, Miss Seymour? I dare say I would. Especially if I had been invited by someone as dashing and brave as Mr. Roosevelt. I dare say you would too, Miss Seymour. Six foot high to the smallest. The royal antelope. Nearly ten inches. Gosh. Where's the word antelope come from, Henry? Antelopes means brightness of eye. At least that's what it says here. Whoa. There must be over 80 species. Look, here it is. Wow. It's beautiful.
That's a very good likeness. Thanks. This way I'll know for sure if I find it. I'm going to take the binoculars, and I'm going to find it for Mr. Roosevelt and the museum. May I? Very well. But don't go far. I won't. Hello. What's your name? Do you understand? Your name. I mean... Indy. My name is Indy. No. Oh. Indy. Uh-uh. One, one. Indy. And... T. Indy. Indy. In day. Yeah, in day. I, I see day. Petro! Petro! Meto? Meto? Indy? Hi! Petro! Around, around! Binoculars. Field glasses. <laughs> like it? <laughs> They look a little wet. They look like they're stampeding. Hey, you want to go off the road? I They're called hippos in America. Tigitam. Tigitam. Nabu, are, uni, umma, umipi. Le, nabishana, kusiyo. Tigitam. 
Indy, you and Giga? And Gia? Is it like like a toothbrush? Tooth? Tooth. Brush. Toothbrush. <laughs> Sit down. Gentlemen, ready, please. And... <laughs> Took quite a time to get this one. She charged me. I felled her at a distance of 30 yards. I think she intended mischief. Were you scared? Nope. Excited. These are very rare animals. <laughs> now, with these two... That makes seven we've managed to bag so far. But if they're so rare, why do you kill so many of them? In the grand scheme of things, seven's not many, my boy. There are thousands of them. Beasts such as these belong in a museum for everyone to share. Besides, it's wonderful sport. Here, here. Drink to that. <laughs> but I still don't understand. You're missing the point, Henry. This is for science. If people are educated. They'll have more respect for wildlife than nature. But why can't you just shoot one or two? Because there are hundreds of museums. But why don't you just put one animal in each museum? That mankind come to understand nature. Very important. I understand your feelings, son. Why, I was given this very gun in recognition of my efforts to preserve the national heritage. I count few achievements higher founding of our national parks, where people can come to understand and respect nature. Oh, I guess I see. That's right, Henry. Knowledge is the key. Mankind has the power to destroy the wilderness. That is something we must never be allowed to do. beginning, the world as it has always been. What do you think happened to the Burton's Oryx? Well, I don't know. It's a mystery. I've been thinking about it. And I think I can help you. Well, 
The Smithsonian needs that animal for its collection. I know I can help you. Good. I can depend on you, eh? Yes, Mr. Roosevelt. I promise. Here for one of our donkeys. All right, take a stroll down. Standing. He's just going to charge me a nice soil. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. This must be the uh, wounded mate. I think absolutely certainly. <laughs> Um, do you know where they are? Enna. Where? Do you know? Yalo. Ngualin. Yindi. Oh my baby. Ayolo na di. Where are they? No, no. No, this is a drawing. Where are they? The real Oryx. Sabo. I promised Mr. Roosevelt I'd find them for him. Two hours ago, maybe three. Perhaps he's gone exploring and he's just lost track of the time. This is no place to go missing. Right, we all better start looking for him. I'll search the ridge. Anna, start looking in the tents. Just disappear like this unless something has happened. No, that's 
not panic. He can't have gone far. I sincerely hope he hasn't. Kermit. Yes, Dad. Get a search party together. Yes, sir. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Jones. We'll find him. That's right. I'm sure Mr. Roosevelt will find him. The oryx dig it up from the ground and eat it. If we find the root melons, we'll find the oryx. Thank you. Thank you. Meto? Bobuana in the Don't you ever, ever do that again. We were worried sick about you. All right. enough trouble for one day, Henry. I'm disappointed in you. I thought you were more intelligent. 
but I was looking for Burton's orcs, and I just lost track of the time. No excuses! Professor Jones, I suggest you keep a closer eye on your son in the future. The African bush is no playground. So you should be. You are going straight to bed. And no supper for you, my lad. They must be near. No, but you know. Tasha. Tasha? Tasha. Yes, there you live. Morning, Junior. Morning, Father. Good morning, Henry. I hope you learnt your lesson, Henry. Yes, sir, I have. Excuse me. No. What is he saying? This is Meadow. He's my friend. He's been helping me. I tried to tell you all yesterday. We found Burton's fringier Doryx. It's the root melon, you see. No, we don't see it, Junior. They aren't here anymore because they only like this kind of root melon. That's what we call elephants' footballs. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are huge. Meadow helped me to find them. I promised you I'd find them, and I have. I have it all written down. Here. 
There was a great fire in the bush which killed all the snakes. These snakes usually ate the mole rats. But the mole rats burrowed underground and they survived the fire. With no snakes, there got to be so many of them, they ate all the melons. No root melons, no oryx. You see, all the plants and animals there, they're connected. When something happens to one animal, it causes something different to happen to all the other animals. The oryx moved away to find the melons. See, the melons are underground, so the oryx have to dig them up in order to eat them. So what about the oryx? Meadow and I saw them. Only a few. They're the most beautiful animals. That's why I lost track of the time. How far did you say? It's in a small gully, somewhere over there. You have a bright lad here, Professor Jones. Simon, saddle up. Are you all going to shoot? right too. Absolutely right, Henry. It's a rare species. Who knows what kind of animals might depend on them, eh? Thank you, Henry. Yes, sir. Bully for you. Bye. You liked Africa. 
Monica, didn't you? Yeah. It was so beautiful. It was so wild. Yes, well, beauty can take other forms than wildness, you know. Like what? Well, like in great art, for example. Some say the great art is never wild. Although some artists' lives certainly were. Really? I mean, take Benvenuto Cellini, for example, one of the great Renaissance artists. His autobiography is, is something, something that... that should be read when Henry is perhaps a bit older. What? Oh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> perhaps you're right. Well, meantime, we should turn our thoughts to Paris, where I'm sure you'll have a stimulating cultural experience studying everything from painting to the ballet. Take a train to Paris. Today? Yes. Civilized. The first thing I'm going to do is to buy a new dress. The first thing I intend to do is take a deep, relaxing bath. Uh, yeah, well, the first thing I want to do is go right to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Do you know what, Seymour? It's the tallest man-made structure on Earth. Mm, isn't that great? So will you take me? Henry, I've climbed the pyramids with you. I have no intention of ascending the dizzying heights of the Eiffel Tower. Oh, will you, Father? We'll see. I'll have to check my schedule. Take my advice, Junior. Your first order of business will be to see the paintings at the Louvre Museum. Excellent idea. Thank you, Professor. Mm. Yes, I know, but you just got here. An old friend of father's invited us to visit the wine country, one of the finest vineyards in France. Mom, why can't we go with you? Well, would you like to write an essay on the history of the grapevine or its significance in French medieval poetry? No, I uh, guess not. Well, why don't you help me finish packing and then be a dear and come downstairs in time to see us off? Father. 
Bye, Junior. Take good care of Miss Seymour. Yes. I will. Have a good trip. See you later. Oh! No, don't. Hi there, Mike. Yes. yes, thank you. Come along. Ah, good boy. Ah, oh, candy. May I miss Seymour, please? No, Henry. You've only just had your breakfast. You want to get to the Louvre before it opens. Come on. Don't touch the stuff. Thank you so much. It smells so good. This is the greatest painting in the world. Isn't it wonderful? See, her eyes follow you wherever you go. <laughs> Even in the bathroom? Henry. Leonardo da Vinci took three years to paint Mona Lisa. Just think of it. She had to smile for three years. So Leonardo had musicians playing in the studio all the time and singers and comedians to keep her amused. This is how you do it. You puff your cheeks and you take in a breath. See? Easy. You don't need to be in funny man. Yeah, it's great. My name's Indy. I'm Norman. Introduce yourself properly. This is Henry Jones, Jr. I'm Miss Seymour, and you are Norman? Rockwell. Oh, I like this one. Look at the amazing nose. Gilandio. The boy is the old man's grandson. Well, we've seen the smiles and we've seen the noses. So what's next? Well, we haven't seen the modern artists yet. Do you see the way the table is cut off at the end? That's new? Degas, French, new. But I don't get it. It looks fuzzy. Well, it's called Impressionism, Henry. It's the art of giving a general effect without worrying too much about the detail. Impressionists claim it's the freshest way for an artist to see the world. Now, what do you think, Henry? Yes, well, I suppose looking at these canvases all day can be tiresome. I know just the cure, and Norman can come too if he likes. But what is it? Well, something you can only find in Paris. Hey, boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It's really great. Yeah. Well, time to go. I have some letters to write, and Henry, I seem to recall a certain essay on Leonardo da Vinci. You mean we're not going to stay for the second show? Oh, yeah, we should stay. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. You can go to the hotel and write your letters, and we'll return right after the show, and then I can do my da Vinci paper. Well, all right. Well, I suppose it wouldn't do any harm. But stay together. Now, just watch one more, and then Back to the hotel in one hour. So, where do you want to go? You want to see where the real artists hang out? I don't know. I've seen a lot of art for one day. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're too young. It's a pretty dangerous place. Really? New York, eh? Hello, Monsieur Dumont. Hello, Norman. Pencils and a notebook, right? Uh, yeah. Where'd you learn to draw? I don't know. 
Everybody asked me that. I guess I just picked it up like a bag of lemon drops. Could I have a look? Oh, sure. That's Dr. Alfonso Rockwell from Queens. He's my most famous ancestor. Guess what he invented? What? The electric chair. Wow. How did he think of that? I thought hanging was inhumane. Reckon the chair was kinder. Me, I don't know. Those are my aunts. They give Bibles to convicts at Sing Sing. And those are my parents. That's great. You really can draw. My parents are very religious, too. I don't think they'd approve of where we're going. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Do you want to spend some time with me, boys? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I improved it. Hey, look. That's Degas. We saw his paintings at the Louvre. Who's the other guy? I don't know. I did. You didn't. I'm sorry. But I still don't like them. Because you don't understand them. I understand them. But I just don't like them. You think they are indecent, is that it? Indecent? My dear fellow. A few years ago, every critic in Paris called my work indecent. I couldn't pay a gallery to show my paintings. Don't tell me about decency in art. And tell me, why do you dislike them? Because they are destructive. You are throwing out perspective and composition. Exactly, because we need a new way of seeing. Oh, a new way of seeing is fine. But I can't tell if that is a woman Oh, a cow. Again, my point. I see shape, the real shape, the form. Uh, the real shape of a woman is different from the real shape of a cow. <laughs> now, my dear fellow, you ask for my opinion and I give it to you. But I must warn you. Do you know what people are saying? that your new paintings will destroy you. Who says that? Matisse. At that uh, Russian collector. Uh, to Shukin. Shukin. <laughs> he actually wept, telling me what a loss you are for French art. You are bringing art not just to an end, but to a dead end. I'm not a bad painter. But the man who did this couldn't do what I do. Good day. Take up! I can do what you do in my sleep! Monsieur Degas, Pablo doesn't want to offend you. No offense taken. Oh, 
Oh, once he was the master. Now his mind has grown old, stale, and closed. I can paint him into the ground! Wait a minute. You can't say that about him. What? Degas. He's a great artist. Nobody can paint like him. I better get back to my hotel. Excuse me. So, you think I can't paint like him? Would you like to come to my studio and see me paint like him? Can I finish my art? Forget it! We're talking about art. What's your name, little man? Jones. What's yours? I am Picasso! Most paintings of nude women pose for an audience. Dega women don't. We are with them in private, like here. He says he likes his women washing to be like a she-cat, licking herself. He sees women without mercy. Their skin turns pink and blue like ours does when we're washing. He puts on layers of pastel. But the chalk isn't like oil paint in layers, is it? See, it drops off. For the final stage. The final stage? To get Dega right, you must do it as he does. From memory. Dega likes to feel what he's doing. You didn't like his painting? No, I like it very much. I'd just rather see him paint like himself and not like Degas. In that case, follow me. My goodness. You like it? Yes, but what is it? It's like blocks or cubes or... Cubism, the newest of the new. What Pablo has done is, he's taken human bodies to bits and rearranged everything. What's he doing here? Those are mine. And a lot of people can't tell the difference. Do you mind that? It's the paintings that matter. You see, a cubist landscape shows how the earth is made of solid shapes at different distances from the viewer. But it doesn't look real. Is it the painter's job to make everything look absolutely real? Isn't it exciting, this idea to make you feel, to see beyond? You see, I can do a Dega, but he can do one of mine. Good young fellow. It is as good as I could have done myself. <laughs> I'm hungry. Ah, bonjour. Uh, vous voulez bien me suivre, s'il vous plaît? Oh, 
Miss me. Come in. Come in. My charge is missing. A small boy, about ten. Tell the inspector what happened. He should have been back hours ago. He was at the puppet theater. I called, but they're closed. We must begin a search. Do you speak English? Madame, I speak perfect English. We will do everything possible to find the young man. <laughs> we will not pour water on trouble oil. I promise you, I am an expert kidnapper of small children. Come with us. No, no, we are working. But you must eat. Come, it will be fun. <laughs> Aren't you hungry? But Miss Seymour will kill me. And miss the chance of being with these guys? No. <laughs> You're finished, eat. Ah, for you, for a painting. <laughs> Open it. Holy smokes, a Louis Blair Yo plane. Like him, we are pioneers. But our plane is the imagination. Get my painting. It's waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Norman, that's with a beautiful lady, huh? No. She likes you. She likes you. Go on. Come. Come with you, Indy. Go. Go. Have some fun. I want to go. Get a guard to sign my painting. That is a very dirty trick, Pablo. I know. Where are all the other girls? Picasso. Again. Let's go. My girl and mine. Hey, what are you saying? They're enjoying themselves. Alors, Picasso, je m'en fous, moi. Elles sont à moi, les filles. Comment Jacqueline et Pauline travaillent pour moi. Push on. Not only the greatest painter of his day, 
who was a visionary who was hundreds of years ahead of his time. Da Vinci imagined many things that have just been invented, like the aeroplane. What are they looking for? Oranges. Once in a while, your market boys, they miss one or two. Delicious. <laughs> Why did you decide to become a painter? Most men, they have choice. Become a banker, a lawyer, tailor, mechanic. Me, I have no choice. No true artist has choice. I must create in order to feel alive. What am I? A bull. Right, a bull. One minute a cycle, the next a bull. Magic, change, from one thing to another. That's what I do. I create a new way of seeing things. But your pictures don't look like anything. What do you mean? Well, the pictures of those ladies in your studio, they don't even look like ladies. Not to your eyes, but to mine they do. That is the difference between a painter like me and the master Leonardo. The great Da Vinci and even Ortega paint with accuracy. When he paint a wild horse, it looked like a wild horse. But when you paint a wild horse, what does it look like? You might not see the horse. But you will certainly see the wildness. the essence of the new painting. I am trying to give spirit a form. True art is emotion. Tell your tutor, Picasso told you that. <laughs> she doesn't even know who he is. But one day she will. One day she will. Come to the party tomorrow night. Don't forget. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. I can't get those paintings out of my head. Look, the streets look different. They haven't changed. They look different to me. Where's the girl? Tell us when the girl is. Ah! Where are the girls? They are haunted. You idiot, you coward, ah. we lose them! Oh, 
<laughs> See at the party tomorrow night? Uh, night? Yeah, 9 o'clock. As long as I can get past Miss Seymour. Leonardo in the meaning of art. Henry, you were not in your room last night. I was working here, where it's quiet. See, I must have fallen asleep. Are you going to punish me? No. This looks like punishment. This isn't punishment. No, it isn't. You will not leave this room until you finish Les Miserables. Great title. Nine o'clock, you will see yourself to bed. Bonne nuit, Henry.
Henry? Henry? gone crazy, Norman. First Miss Seymour locked me in my room, but then I escaped and nearly fell from the rooftops. Okay, we don't want these guys to think we're weird, all right? This is a grown-up party. It's kind of serious. <laughs> Introduce you to the other Americans. I want one of his cubist paintings. He'll have to die to get one of his paintings. <laughs> oh. Fernand. This is Mr. Kant Weiler. He's a famous art dealer. This is Norman. He's a great painter. <laughs> then this is Gertrude Stein. Hello. And this is Alice B. Toklas. Hello. Excuse me, I'm looking for two boys who've gone to a party. <laughs> of course, Picasso. <laughs> this is like the Alamo. Rousseau! Rousseau! And this is Rousseau, the primitive painter. Your speech! We are the two great painters of the age. Say, si, gracias. You, in the Egyptian style. Me, in the motel. Tell us your ghost story. Oh, no. I'm too frightened. Oh, be brave. Tell us. Tell, come on, tell the story. Be brave. Oh, get it. Tell us. Yes. Tell us. Tell us. The ghost walks the catacombs. He presides over the dead of Paris. He is the supreme phantom. The satanic messenger. <laughs> he is on the roofs and in the doorway. Gauguin saw the ghost, and Vincent too. He told me, then, when old Paris slept, the ghost arrives. Ah, Miss Seymour! Henry! The tutor. Would you please put that thing down? can't see much. What's he going to do to her? I don't know. Do you think he's going to hurt her? No, I don't think so. Let me look again. Do you always draw people without asking them first? You didn't ask to come here. Don't move! You can't frighten me. If you don't keep quiet, the trolling will frighten both of us. Sit still. Can't I talk? No. 
You leave the talking to me. Those two boys have shown me they love art. You should let them be more independent. They will really understand art if they spend a little more time with me. I'm not sure the police will agree with you. The police are like critics. They have as much to do with art and artists as ornithology has for the birds. I'd like to look. No! To be perfectly honest, Senor Picasso, you are one of the rudest men I have ever met. When I want lessons in good manners from the English, I'll ask. No. No! Good Lord. It is not a religious drawing. No, I know, but you really can draw. Better than anyone alive. Don't boast. Why not? It's true. It's absolutely beautiful. And? Time to go. Miss Seymour. What do you think of this painting? Look. Oh, a dead guy, isn't it? One of his best, I think. Yes, isn't it perfect? He is such a talented man. How long have you had it? Oh, no long. And how much did you say you uh, paid for it? Sorry, bad habit of an art dealer. Not at all. A few hundred francs. I'll give you a thousand. A thousand? So much? It is a very good work, but there's no sign. I would feel very bad taking so much free work, which is no sign. Then I'll get, they gotta sign it. Wonderful is the deal, but only if you allow me the privilege of being there when it is signed. <laughs> Here, Indy, I want you to have this. This is your drawing Picasso signed. It's a souvenir of our adventures. Thanks. This one. I've got him, the old fool. The old bull taken down by the dashing, talented young matador. I don't like this. You're being cruel. <laughs> I'm being brilliant. Ah, here he comes. Ah, maestro! Thought I'd find you here. <laughs> I just bought one of your masterpieces. Mm. I must have been tired. Tired? I must say, in my humble opinion, that I think it's one of your most brilliant works. Yes. Yes, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? Quite so. <laughs> but alas, you have neglected to sign it, Maestro? Oh. Well, I, uh, I can remedy that. The pigment I use doesn't smell like this. I am such a genius that even he can't tell his own work from mine. Pablo, what are you saying? I painted that painting. And it is so good that they got signed it as one of his own. Are you out of your mind? It's not funny. I suggest you apologize. Never! The boys will tell you. They were there. Tell him, you saw me do this. We didn't see you do it. We didn't see you do it. Right now! The truth is, it looks like a Degas, and it's signed by Degas. Pablo, stop! Okay. Monsieur Khan, how would you like to buy this little Picasso? Curious. 
Cubist sketch. I've been trying to get Pablo to sell me one of these Cubist pieces since January. I'll give you 500 francs for it. 500 francs? For one of his most interesting pieces? This drawing is brilliant. Yes, it's quite good. All right, 800. <sighs> Wait a minute. I didn't do this. Looks good enough to be yours. Is that your signature? It looks like it. Well, I uh, yes, it is, but... Uh... Well, who else could draw that good? Brack? No, no, I didn't do it. Well, then who is it, Mr. Picasso? This is you, Pablo. It's wonderful. You're joking too much this morning. It makes my head hurt. <laughs> 1,000 francs, no more. Sold. A good price, don't you think? <laughs> Here. You get half. Listen, if I was staying in Paris longer, I could be your agent, and I would make you rich. And I have ended up with two wonderful paintings. <laughs> Go. I should have loved to see Mr. Picasso hoist with his own petard. He's such an impudent rogue. Yeah, but I liked him, though. Well, so did I. And I shall always treasure the drawing he made of me. Here they are. Mother. Henry. Oh. Brilliant. <laughs> so nice to see you, Seymour. Father, how's your trip? Oh. Well. We had a lovely time. How about you? Uh, it was okay, I guess. Well, son, I hope you employed your time wisely. Did you visit the Louvre? Yes, sir. And now I suppose you think you know all about art. Well, it gave me a lot of ideas. Art seems to stretch the boundaries in the way we see things. Ah, but what you don't realize, Junior, is that a museum only tells you a small part of the story. It doesn't give you the true sense of the artist's struggle to create, which can be very exciting. Really? Yes. Uh, some artists lead extraordinarily colorful lives. Do they? Lives of danger, daring, passion, eccentricity, and outrageous behavior. But uh, you're a little too young to know about that just yet. <laughs> <clears throat> Something the matter, Miss Seymour? Oh. Well, uh, you're certainly right about that, Father. I'll have to wait till I'm older to get the real excitement. So, what did you find at the museum to be of particular interest? I should know about.